Today we're having a look at the Tectrix Open Port 2. This one actually belongs to my boss, um, but it doesn't really work uh, very well. It certainly doesn't work as intended. Um, when he plugs it into his car using the, the OBD connector here, a little light is supposed to light up, or some lights are supposed to light up on the back here, and well, basically they just don't. However, when he plugs it into the uh, mini USB connector here, uh, it's able to be seen by the computer, the ECU is able to be programmed, and everything works fine. We had a bit of a look at this while we were at work, and uh, the area we're concentrating on at the moment is, is down here. Now, from what we've been able to work out, this here is a, it's a DC to DC buck converter. So this is designed to take in the 12-ish volts that you get in a car um, electrical system and convert it down to something that the board can use. And this one seems to have kind of like a double double layer of this because there's this buck converter here, but along here is also a 3.3 volt regulator. So what we're guessing is happening is that, you know, for when it's plugged into a car, it uses this in conjunction with this to step down the 3.3 volts needed for the, uh, for the microprocessor in this. And when it's plugged into the USB, come straight out of the USB, the USB goes into this, which converts its 5 volt volts down to 3.3. Uh, and when we had to look around this section here uh, and the output of it, it was actually throwing out 1.6 volts, which is way too low if you're going to feed that into a 3.3 volt regulator. They normally have to have um, about a volt above what they're outputting in order to work. So if you've got a 3.3 volt, you need, you know, sort of 4.3, 4.5, something like that on the input. Um, but this is only throwing out 1.6, so something is not right. Let's have a look at the data sheet for the LM2734. That is the DC to DC step-down converter that's on that board. And as we can see from the data sheet, it's got a 3 volt to 20 volt input range, which is great for a car. Um, although car batteries are 12 volts when they're charging and doing other bits and pieces, they're quite often a reasonable amount higher. So you need something that can go up to you know, something halfway decent without blowing up. Let's have a look at the application circuit. And if we look over here, we can see we have a potential divider. And this is basically the mechanism that sets the output voltage. And on this board, as in the application circuit, those resistors are R1 and R2. Now, both of these are marked with uh, 01C or O1C, and those are 10K resistors. And it's quite unusual to have the same value resistor as part of your divider in these things. I don't think I've ever seen that at all and I've seen quite a lot of um, these kind of circuits so I don't know whether they've put the wrong value on there and that's making it output the wrong voltage or or what but either way something's not right and we need to change one of those resistors and this website is uh, excellent it helps you calculate your resistor values if you're uh, not good at math uh, like me so I've put in our reference voltage that I got from the data sheet and that's basically a um, 0.8 volts. The output voltage, we want 5 volts because it's got to be higher than the 3.3 volt regulator and that's a nice standard sort of voltage. And we know that R1 is 10k and I've told it to compute what R2 should be and it's saying we should replace that with a 52.5k resistor. The closest I've got to that is a 56k so that's what I'm going to use instead. So what we're going to do now is take off R2 and replace it with a 56k resistor. Apologies for the vibratey nature of the picture. That is um, the small SMD rework station that I use. Okay, we're going to put a bit of flux on this. Love a bit of flux. Difficult to do this sort of stuff without it. We'll now wait four years for this station to heat up. This is the quick TR1100.
more or less positions itself. And that is on. Just make sure it looks okay. Just going to give it just a little bit of solder at the end. I think it's alright, but can't hurt. Yeah, that's fine. And now to test it. So unfortunately, this still doesn't work. I've had a bit of a look around uh, this portion of the circuit here, and all the passives seem okay, uh, but there's no switching output coming from this component here, so clearly uh, it's dead. I don't have any of those in stock, so what I've decided to do is actually replace it with this board here, which is a DC to DC switcher board. I'll set it to 5 volts output, and then connect the, the input of it to the 12 volts input um, over here and then I'm going to connect the output of it into the the input here on the low dropout regulator. But the first thing I need to do is plug this into USB and just make sure that the I get the connections right on here. I think it's um, the same layout as the standard LM1117. Uh, so that should be input, that should be output, and that should be ground. So let's uh, plug that into USB and just check that. Now this is what this should do when you plug it in. get your nice little light to show up there. Uh, that's not happening at all when you connect it up to 12 volts on a power supply. So while we've got it plugged in, let's check those voltages on that voltage regulator. So it should be our input. And it is, we're showing 4.57 volts uh, for the USB. That's uh, absolutely fine. and 3.2 volts on the output and this is then ground. The reason uh, the voltage is a little bit lower is because the USB is going through a diode by the looks of it and obviously that's dropping the voltage a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is take the switcher off the board because I don't want anything getting in the way of the voltage that I've got going in. So I think it's better just to get rid of it completely. It doesn't work. that's gone. Let's solder these input wires on then. So if we tack this one, actually let's find out where that input goes to and I can probably solder it onto one of the existing pads for the switcher. That's a good idea. So that is our input. So we can solder our 12 volt in onto that middle right pad there. I do get people asking every so often whether I'm still using that JBUD 1200 iron, and uh, yeah, I am indeed using that for this project. And we know we've got a nice ground over on the 
linear reg. So that can be our ground for this new switcher. Perfect. So those are the inputs connected for the switcher now. As you can see, and over there. Unfortunately, I have a wide angle um, converter lens on the microscope, but it doesn't really do very much of a wide angle. Let's work out we're going to put these other ends. Well, actually, that should be quite easy. Um, they're going to go over here. So the output of our DC to DC is going to go onto the input here of the 3.3 volt linear regulator. And let's put the input wire to the reg on, which is the output wire of the switching regulator. So this is our 5 volts out. The only thing I don't like about Kynar wires, it's a little bit brittle. But I'll make sure I stick this down onto the board, it shouldn't move that much. So that is that on. And let's solder the other ground wire on, so the output ground basically, onto the uh, ground pin of the other one where we had the, uh, the input one. And that is done. So now to see if it powers up. Right, I've attached this to a 12 watt power supply. And uh, yeah, let's power it on, see if it does anything. looking good. Now interesting it's a different sort of flashing light sequence than the one before but it's definitely alive and doing something. And now we need to see whether it can be detected by the computer because it's the USB device as well. So let's plug that in and have a look. That sounds good. Okay, well I don't have the drivers for it, but as a USB device it's been detected. I'm pretty happy with that. It's not in error or anything like that, and the vendor ID and the device IDs look okay. Now this is what it looks like when it's all back together, and the more astute amongst you might notice that the, the serial number's a little bit dodgy on this one. Um, being one, two, three, so we actually think that this is a pirated um, open port 2. This isn't a real one. This is a, a Chinese ripoff that cost pretty much as much as a real one did, apparently. Um, but either way, it seems to be working now. And uh, back to the boss it goes. Looking good. writing data to it isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and thank you for watching. Cheers, bye bye.